This is a video about getting the taxes straight and getting the taxes in a model correct in a situation where I'm just showing you kind of an example of a Elvis's um, solar plant and really to do it correctly you some places will allow you to account for foreign exchange losses and gains and your depreciation should be in a foreign currency but then you might want to make your 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 whole model in euros or USD or something like that so I kind of run into some difficulties and tried to make shortcuts around this and I'm going to evaluate this with a simple model. Now, I just want to tell you something about my videos. I found a very good use for the videos. My friend Elena, she works very hard. She's in Singapore. And if she needs to get to sleep, she watches one of these videos. And it puts her straight to sleep. So these videos are like a, a, just a, you can use them for sleeping uh, 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 pills instead of sleeping pills. All right, so yeah, let's go. Enough of that. I've made an assumption. I've used Naira and I made an exchange rate. Probably the exchange rate's much higher now. And you know I should show you all our exchange rate whatever databases, but I'm not. And then a lot of times people make an assumption that the local inflation is higher than, let's say, a USD inflation in this case. And they want, might want, you might want to make an assumption about a devaluation on top of that or, or less or negative devaluation, whatever. Okay, and then we'll, we'll see how these kind of assumptions affect the rate of return you're, 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 you're going to earn. And I'm making another video about rates of return. Whatever. All right, so we I put some operating assumptions and let's put I put those in USD and let's assume that the EBIT dog grows at the EBIT uh, 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 that let's make the, the I think the income tax rate is 32 percent. These projects seem to get some kind of tax holiday and then they seem to get some kind of accelerated depreciation. We better put a well, I'll not right now, and then we'll show you why you need a five here. And then maybe we include FX losses or not. And I'm going to include some uh, uh, financing. Now, I've set up some titles here because, again, Elaine has said, ah, it's much better when you set up titles. I don't have to watch you typing on those old boring titles. And then... You can give us a file with a blank and we can try some of it. I wonder if anybody really does. Or you can just look at the completed file. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm going to put the assumptions in a separate sheet. Okay. So let's press Shift F11. No, Shift F9. I can't see. And let's call these our inputs. Now I am obsessed with this and I'm sorry. Uh, uh, because nobody uses my generic macro stuff and I'm going to keep harping on that that's not true one person does Hetty says she does only one person in the world does it so I'm going to move this <sighs> oh shit oh god And then let's uh, uh, copy it and let's Alt E S W to get the columns. And all of those things like that, if you go to the uh, 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 my website, okay, and then you go to this generic macro, you should open that. Now I happen to have it already open, okay, and. It, when you open it, you get this, and then you might have to press initialize, and you have to enable the content and all that stuff, and you get some stuff at the bottom of this. If it's not at the bottom, it's not working. 
Okay, and then we can, let's just, we've got, I've got some shortcut keys, and if you press Control alt d you can see some of the added shortcut keys. Big deal. It's so simple. Okay. And, uh, apps. Okay, so let's, those are some of our assumptions, and we'll incorporate the, some of those assumptions. Control alt c I hope that. God, you start using this, and then you can. We're, we don't. We're, we don't really need a conditional formatting, and we don't need rows at the top. So let's just do something simple. Control C. I'd rather put some outlines in here, and uh, I'll make a medium line. It's probably too big, but whatever. Okay, that's some of our assumptions. And then let's go to our financial model. Control minus. Let's get rid of the stuff we did here. And I, one of the things I didn't put in here is the the uh, life of the project. Let let's put the project life. We better be a little bit more flexible. And let's let's make it 20 years. Okay. Oh God, I better do that. Don't don't. Am I okay? All right, and then we'll we'll get that from the other page. Now I want a few extra lines. Why in the heck is this different? This let's make it a little bigger. And I'm obsessed with this too. So I, I think we better put our down here. Let's put our units. Uh, let's put a driver one. Uh, driver two, maybe I could have, uh, you know, done the old driver three and a sum column and uh, a start. And maybe, uh, maybe we don't need that one, or maybe we'll need it later. Okay, so our exchange rate. Let's put in naira per USD, and then I think what we really ah. And what I meant to do is, of course, right at the beginning, we better put our operating flag. Okay. Who knows? Maybe the unit should go at the top. How boring is this to watch this kind of stuff? So this is a flag. And then we put our 20. And then we put an equal sign at the end. This has to be greater than because I'm going to make the uh, first one. Ah, oh, God. The, the, the first 0 a, a, the construction period. And then this has to be less than or equal to, to this number. And let's do what everybody in the world does except me, make it zeros and ones. And I think I don't have enough. So if I put Alt E I S. Oh man, it took me a while. Shift Control R, I get the rest of it. And then notice it starts at column K, Control Alt C, and I better put that we're starting in column K here. And the 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 the, 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 the sum column is in column H, so we can kind of get a sum column ready. And let's put a little bit of a uh, border around that one, maybe medium dots. How's that? And I didn't mean to do that. I meant to take that. And we might want to get it from another sheet. And we seem to have about four, three things as a as a as a as a top row, and we're ready to go. And I didn't. Oh, I, did, I hope I didn't swear too much. I didn't put the, uh, when I press Control alt C, I didn't click on this uh, one up here for marking it. Okay. Enough. That's enough. Okay. And I'm going to do that again and again. And if you get mad and give me thumbs down at the top, as if that makes a real difference in my life. <laughs> it should. I get my side. Maybe I'll have to be like my sisters and go to some stupid psychologist. Waste of time. Criticize me all the time. All right, uh, let's go to the. So now we we have our exchange rate. 
And if we have a different inflation, I'm going to compute a PPP exchange rate. Okay, and I, uh, uh, so let's put our starting value here as our, our 350. And if the auditors scream at you for that, tough crap. You know, there's a little bit of a different formula. So we're going to increase it by the local inflation and, and then do, and, and then divide it by the, uh, whatever the USD inflation, that's our PPP exchange rate. And of course, I didn't press F4s. What a crime. And I hope you believe in putting these drivers in there. Okay. And then we can say, okay, well, let's put an index for if we have a further devaluation that goes away from our simplistic PPP exchange rate. And somewhere I have even a a file uh, uh, that works through and shows in kind of for various different countries how there have been very big deviations, shift control one, shift control R, from the exchange rates. And then we can put our final uh, uh, exchange rate then. And that's, we're going to use that exchange rate to compute the, the uh, uh, foreign exchange gains or losses, which for me is a pain because you, you kind of take the percent change in the inflation rate, but you don't, uh, in the exchange rate, but you don't do it exactly like that. You take the, you, these, it's not typically the starting value divided by the beginning value. It's the other way, the beginning divided by the starting, and then it works. Okay. We'll try to figure out why. So let's put our EBITDA without inflation in, and let's just take that EBITDA and multiply that by the our wonderful little flag that I should use the mouse for. Okay. And then we can put an index for our inflation rate. Okay. And let's get this one. And I'm, this is stressing me out because I feel like everybody else is so fast and you got to go so fast. And I violate Napoleon's rule. It says, press me slowly. I'm in a hurry. And Okay, and then we'll get our EBITDA with inflation, and uh, we better put our units here. I better put Shift Control One, USD, and then we'll put Naira. Uh, the put it in Naira. Now the reason we'll put it in Naira is because uh, uh, we better multiply this by the exchange rate, and then I'm going to divide it by a thousand. So I better put Naira. Uh, uh, thousands. Sometimes I put ranged names on, you know, these, these uh, units. I hate ranged names, but for that, maybe they're okay. Now let's, let, let, we, we have a tax holiday. So we're going to really have to, to get this right. We compute our taxes in Naira, then convert them to the U.S. But we, if we have some USD financing, we have to put an FX loss on that financing, and maybe get that in the taxes. So this is where the taxes gets a little, can get a little messy. And let's put that as a flag. So we have the uh, uh, tax holiday. And we'll just say when this age is less than the, or equal to the tax holiday okay oops that gave us a true one a true so i don't want to get that true i want to multiply by one notice it didn't color it to get it colored what we have to do is do the same thing again uh, i'm gonna make this red when it comes from a different sheet and okay i I have to reinitialize the macros. And uh, uh, let's put the age after the holiday. So we'll start our counter a little bit different. So this will be the, the, the period or something like that. And we'll just say, if not the tax holiday, then take this minus the tax holiday, so I should have kind of put it there. Zero. Okay, and, and we have it. Uh, now this is not, oops, uh, uh, with the number. Uh, oh, God, 
please. Uh, maybe this is, you're so much smarter than me, but whatever. So we have a counter that starts then. And the reason we need the counter is a little bit for our tax rate just in a minute. So let's put our tax rate here, uh, uh, a percent. And that's a percentage of our income. And we've got 32%. And we'll just, for now, take that tax rate and multiply it by the the, uh, not the holiday, okay? And there we've got that. In. And then we'll go to our capital expenditures. Those are just in one period. Uh, we really need this to be in. So, so we'll put the capital expenditures first in USD. Okay, and get them and uh what should i do should i uh, i suppose i better make a construction switch uh, and, and, uh, is this really horrible if you're watching this this is this oops oh crap oh I didn't swear okay um and this is this one equals zero stupid kind of thing okay and uh, then we put the, the we better redo this alt wff alt wff again okay control alt c again you're getting sick of me doing this, but it doesn't really take very long, does it? Okay. And then we put in our capital expenditures in, in, in Naira. Uh, thousands. I hope you're not getting mad at me by saying you're wasting time on this, but it's really not because we put our, our CapEx in, in, in U.S. first. And then we'll shift control C, shift control R, and then we'll take this, multiply it by our exchange rate, divided by a thousand, and we get into Naira. Okay? And then now we can get our tax depreciation percent. This is per annum. Uh, and we can press control D to, to copy it down, and then we can put equal lookup. Now, I'm purposely making a mistake here. I, I kind of, so if you don't use the lookup, all I can say is use it. You, if you still use the V lookup like I used to use or match an index, you're a fool. Sorry about saying that. I can say that. And it didn't go there, so we better put a 5 here. And then it will turn it off at the end. So you do those kind of things. Uh, and that's our tax depreciation uh, uh, rate. And we don't need it in, in, uh, in USD. So then we'll put tax depreciation in USD. And we'll put tax depreciation in Naira. Okay, whoops. Uh, and if I put, I think we should put Naira first because that's the uh, because that's the one that's really driving everything. That's the true tax depreciation. So maybe we'll put our a driver here, which is the the, the Naira amount, and then we'll put our USD amount. And then we'll go over here and put an equal sign. We'll take our... Oh, I'm nervous. Why should I be so nervous? Who gives a crap? You can turn off the thing anyway. And then I did this wrong because the whole reason for getting this, uh, for discussing this kind of age after the project life, which was okay, is that we 
do that we put it like this what an idiotic thing to do to put offset functions in here that nobody could kind of understand i should show you what they did oh so horrible and then we can put it in usd too or the best way to do it in usd would be to take this naira uh, divide it by our our exchange rate and then multiply it by a thousand okay and because that's the way the tax depreciation is working i told you so now let's put our profit and loss in now did i do i hope i did i did the uh, uh, naira EBITDA. okay and then we'll put our tax depreciation in naira next okay why did this uh, shift control c Okay, and, and then we have our EBIT. Now, there are also shortcuts in the generic macro uh, for underlining shift control E, and then we make our opening NOL, which is equal to the last year's closing NOL. We put a maximum of a, a minus this or zero. Now, there are two things I want to tell you about this. First of all, and then a maximum of the, the, the positive number or zero. The first thing is, if there's a expiration of NOL, that can get very hairy. That's a real pain. That can be a real pain. Uh, and I've got some, I can't remember. It, you have to use some minimum functions. Oh, come on. Shift control C. And and uh, the second thing is the NOL itself is is a uh, opening NOL is is equal to closing. And what did I do this? Oh, and this has to be the minimum also of the opening balance. There's so many millions of times that it's just so boring nowadays. The min max, but it's a great example of the min max. So then we get a nice little adjusted EBITDA. Now I didn't put any financing in here yet. And the adjusted EBITDA is our original EBITDA plus the plus the amount we put in minus the amount we take out. Okay, and the reason and when we put in some financing and put in some interest, we might have the so it still says EBIT, but it's just consider that EBIT now. And then we can take our taxes, our, our line, and multiply it by the tax. Now, the reason I'm trying to do this at the same time, it's very difficult for an old man to multitask like this. So we don't pay any taxes till, till this year. But this NOL will be influenced, have an influence on the taxes. We can't just take a shortcut. This is what I learned the hard way. We need to redo the NOL and local kind of currency. And when these models say what currency you're using, what a bunch of shit. They should say what currency are you using for, let's take the EBIT minus the tax to get our income. What currency are you using for taxes? What currency are you using for IRRs? That kind of stuff. Not just some general and what's the currency of because somebody at some one of these consulting firms told you to do it. So now let's take the Eddie Daw for the US. Let's just show you now what I'm doing is something that you shouldn't really do. Uh, and then uh, put the depreciation in USD. We put the depreciation here in USD. And then we put our EBIT in, which, right? I can call that EBIT, and then we have our opening NOL equals the closing NOL. Put a maximum of a minus on the EBT, or zero, and then we put a maximum of the EBT, or zero, but then we can't use that. We cannot use that unless we've got some we can't use any opening NOL we don't have and our closing is the opening plus the amount we use minus the amount we take out and we get our adjusted EBIT is this one a plus the amount we put in minus the amount we take out and our 
taxes paid are this times the same tax rate somewhere up here and we get our net income as the EBT now I you know I've been having to follow these horrible rules that I hate because I say foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of a petty mind that's what Ralph Waldo Emerson told us and that's a great saying I think putting these in one sheet is sometimes oh these rules on the sheets they drive me nuts and they they violate Modigliani Miller principles because you're supposed to start with operations and put financing afterwards shift control G now here's the problem if we put our taxes in Naira which are the true taxes we have to pay because the, the you'll fill out your tax forms presumably I assume in Naira okay and then you put your exchange rate in so I'll re put our exchange rate up here uh, I took the wrong one didn't I Shit. I wonder if I took the wrong one a couple of other times so uh, I should have taken this one you know what I'm going to do to make sure I didn't make that error I think I did I think if you saw I did I'm going to put no I'll just leave it as a PPP exchange rate and then we take our taxes and to get them back to USD we divide this and multiply by a thousand oops and then we say okay well how does that compare with these actual taxes we looked at and oh so far okay oh they're not the same oh it's interesting after the NOL they became become the same so you could if you didn't have an NOL if you did not have an NOL I'm repeating this five times if you did not have an NOL all you could do to compute the taxes is you could use the USD tax depreciation and then uh, uh, deflate it and then you get the right answer that was really the lesson that's the big one of the biggest lessons of this whole thing now let's make a little cash flow statement so and so now we're going to compute our FX gains and losses and see how that works so let's go to the EBITDA in Naira and then let's get the taxes in Naira okay and then we'll get our dividends okay that's just how simple our cash flow is no debt yet okay and then let's go down to the USD and do the same thing let's put our EBITDA in uh, USD and put our taxes not these erroneous taxes but the 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 taxes from the exchange rate and the difference is the dividends we could pay in USD and they're basically the same okay I mean it, it's just conversion okay I think so far so good okay because taxes come and now let's put let's let's make a a uh, um, the FX and let's say we have some financial statements in USD but we had our depreciation in, in Naira so what we could do is go over here and take the percent difference in the, in the or the kind of increase in the exchange rate or we could go over to here and do it kind of differently now uh, actually let's leave that out let's put our opening ba plant balance so now I'm going to struggle and I, I might have to turn the T television now this is a video I have to turn that off okay and then let's put in our capital expenditures in USD come on there they are and then let's put the, the depreciation in USD come on where is that down here? okay and then we'll put we'll leave our gains or losses out and then we'll put our opening plus this minus the depreciation plus the FX gains because if we don't do that 
Shift Control C, Shift Control R. Oh, damn it. Okay, well, all right, I'll do this. I'll make it a little bigger. Okay, if we don't do that, we are left with. What the heck's that? Oh, God. Uh, um, I should have shown you that. Maybe I'll cut off the middle from there. Okay, and then we have our plant balance not going down to zero. So what we need to do is we have to take away... If it's gonna, gonna go down, it's gonna be an FX loss, isn't it? Okay, and the way we can do that is we can. I'm going to pause the video just for a minute. Okay, so now if we, if I do the following, I put the percent change in the exchange rate, which is kind of stupid. Shift, and then, but that. If I use that, it doesn't work. So, but it, there must be a reason for this. And I'm sorry, I'm not smart enough to know it. If I take it like this, where we take the opening divided by the closing, and take that, and it must be because we're taking opening balance, and multiply that by this exchange rate. Now, what I did in the closing balance, I subtracted that exchange rate loss. Okay, and then what happens is it goes straight to zero. Isn't that beautiful? So the lesson here, again, there's a real lesson here. The lesson here is that you use the, the, the and let's get rid of, we can get rid of these temporarily, can't we? Cannot we? Shift all right now, okay? And we will uh, get these in. Okay, now, after we do this, let's see if the balance sheet still balances. So let's make our opening equity balance equal our closing equity. Now this, since we, where did I put, uh, oh, oh, let's put add the, the investment, which is just our CapEx, because we didn't have any, any debt. And then let's put less the FX adjustment. And then we'll, we'll see if it all works. Shift Control C, maybe. And, and then let's go up and get our investment. Ugh. Okay. And after that, let's put our gain on our FX here. And then, whoops, income without FX. That's our, our, ah, shoot, it's our, uh, uh, in USD, I better take the uh, uh, EBIT minus the taxes expressed in EBIT. So that was a little bit bad, but no, it's okay. Taxes in USD, demonstrating that we can't really we can't really do the other one. And then we'll put our FX gains here and our dividends we had up here in. in, in and then our closing balance and if it doesn't work I'm going to cry but whatever minus the losses minus the whoops oh god the opening balance plus the investment plus the income I've got to change that minus the FX gains minus the dividends I made those mistakes totally on purpose so that you would see uh, what to do. Isn't that a good idea that I made that mistake? Okay, and it balances in the first year. Yay! Oh, gifts. And I didn't make the opening balance, obviously. I thought I made it. Oh, well, that, was, that wasn't a great idea to do this thing, was it? Opening balance is last year's closing balance. Okay, maybe I'll put it back. This demonstrates it. Kind of. And the second year, it still balances. That's yay. That's yay. 
and then it bounces all the way. Oh my God. Okay, and then we can have our, our uh, uh, difference. Okay. And let's, I just am so happy. Nothing is a better feeling in the world. Nothing gives you more ecstasy than the balance sheet balances. I've said that many times, and it really is true, especially when you have X, FX. Okay, this comes zero equals zero, whatever. I think we can leave trues there, can't we? And we'll put our thing back. So that's without debt. Now, what I'm going to do is um, add debt to the to the analysis okay and then I guess we can put the financial statements in Naira but that was less interesting uh, and because we don't have any FX gains or loss so I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to kind of we'll, we'll copy this page and then we'll do the same sort of analysis but include debt in the analysis okay okay so um, am I resident? I hope. Come on. Yes. Oh, God. The Now, I computed the IRR for one model. Okay. I, uh, and this is the project IRR because we have no taxes. So I put for, you know, I computed a USD IRR. We had our dividends. And I subtracted the initial investment and put an equal sign on the IRR. I also um, put underlines, very important, extremely important, did our, our financial statements in Naira, and we had no FX uh, uh, gains or losses. And income without the FX is the same because the tax and the depreciation was already in Naira. So we didn't have to make an adjustment and then everything balanced uh, nicely and just to illustrate a little bit what happens control alt c maybe and let's take some of this stuff away you know because i don't care about this stuff but let's make a, a, a dashboard of three and i put our equity irr here and if we would only have a two percent inflation in local currency it made a big difference and I hope I put that that thing. Well, I probably didn't. If we if we uh, uh, had a higher inflation rate, well, it gets eaten up. It was interesting that 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 had less of an effect uh, than if we really put it down. So that 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 inflation in the in the IRM. I'm repeating myself because I, I I can. It's it's has a it has a pretty important effect okay and we could almost look at what the effect of the nol is too now i added a simplistic little uh, uh, financing so what i'm going to do now is alt em and i'm going to create a copy and move it to the end and we'll put with debt okay and let's set this up a little i'm kind of violating the, what elena suggested which is to to leave titles here for me for you but this is our this is really our tax ah come on okay this all stays the same but when we get down to our p l we're going to have to make some adjustments and 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 first thing we better do is I'm going to I'm going to agree with Elena. I'm going to type some titles. Okay, let's try it. So I put the I'm going to walk through the titles and investigate some issues. So Control Alt C again. That's important. Okay, this now I have five title lines. So I put the uh, PPP index because we're going to have to use that and go over and go over again. I should have done that at first. My kind of rule is you 
put what you're going to use a lot in that in that little title. It's not miscellaneous crap. And then we have our exchange rates and our tax parameters. And then I put a sources and uses of funds statement. And we'll do that in USD because we'll control D. We'll assume uh, Naira. We'll assume the debt is issued in USD. Okay. And then we'll put a payment schedule all in USD and figure out the repayment on a level repayment using the PMT function. Okay, and we'll get a repayment and an interest all in USD. But then we'll convert this into Naira. Now, if you're in a real model, I hate this. When they would go and on every single issue convert it. And if you have multiple debt issues, I strongly suggest using this little sum if statement to figure out, to get all the beginning balances, all the interests. It's such a pain to do, have multiple issues. I found that there was a divide by zero there. And then once you have that, you can just use the sum if statement uh, with all of the little code numbers and summing all the repayments and all that. But then my point here is that you just need this line item for taxes on the total. Who cares if it's Naira, US, or whatever? At the end of the day, you need Naira to compute the interest. So we're going to fill in the interest in the tax. And then there might be some tax adjustments or might might not be. And, and this should have been Naira too, obviously. Okay. And we should have, uh, whatever, we should have gone down here, control D. Uh, oh, no. If you want to get rid of the lines, you press Shift Control F, Shift Control E. Again, Control Alt D shows you up. Control Alt D shows you some of the uh, shortcut keys. Control Alt E shows you some of the shortcut keys that people might not get used to in Excel, even for di different languages and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, and then we, we, we have our NOL. And for the, uh, the USD, this is kind of a relevant one again, but we put the interest in USD and that NOL might be affected and all that. And then finally, we get our taxes in Naira and get our taxes in USD for the taxes in USD. That's what we really want. And then in the USD, when we compute our cash flow, now we're going to have to take away the... Uh, the debt service. Oops, and adjust the. Uh, we're going to have to adjust the IRR for for the, adjust the cash flow again for to subtract the equity cash flow and not the, not the total. And that we get from the, the total sources and uses. So. Did I get it in the right column? It'll be right here. It'll be blank. It'll give us a num. That doesn't matter. Okay, and then we put our financial statements. Now, the USD, I couldn't really give a crap about that one. But when we get the for the financial statements in Naira, we have equity. But this time, we need debt, too. And to get the debt, we're going to have to make some exchange rates assumptions. And let's understand what kind of trick we have to do to get all that work because we need this FX adjustment on the debt balance to go all the way way up into the taxes. Uh, up there into the uh, uh, tax statement. And maybe there's no FX adjustment. Maybe there is. That creates all sorts of uh, difficulties and confusions. It's not that difficult really, is it? If you... If you uh, get used to it. If you understand this in a simple kind of framework, I think it's not all that difficult, but but whatever. Oh, shoot. I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so let's get started. So we go down. All this is the same. And then I put our CapEx. And let's, let's put our uh, CapEx and multiply it by our, our, our uh, construction flag. Uh, this was really bad. I didn't have my ones and zeros colors. Oh my god. All right. I hope you're not yelling. You're probably yelling at me. So what about the, the, the coloring? And say this was a thing about taxes, not coloring. 
but people waste so much time on this coloring it pisses me off so much and then so our total let's take our total uses uh, 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 and of course that would create all sorts of circularities if we had I don't care interest during construction in there and we got our equity all to equal to get the total and good 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 oh fuck why am I doing this shift control E shift control E okay and then let's do the same thing and get this in Naira so we take this to, we, we take the total debt and multiply it by the exchange rate and divide it by a thousand. I hope you see, oh, that was good. We take the equity. It's good to have that at the top. Okay, isn't it? And then uh, let's go to the debt schedule. Now on the debt schedule, let's first get the repayment. And that repayment is this, this thing here. So we can put equal Ah, we better do something. I'm going to have to... Oh, I can't believe that I didn't put a, a little uh, uh, repayment switch. Flag. Oh, my God. If I didn't call it flag or mask or whatever the hell people call it. Uh, and then we... Because it's, we have to follow the financial modeling language you know so we can show how sophisticated we are and this uh, 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 period has to be greater than zero and this period has to be less than or equal to the number and then we should multiply it by one and then shift control r Control C and then press color the sheet and then I hope it didn't mess it up. And where am I? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we'll take our payment, which are PMT, and it says get the interest rate. Now, if you don't use this, um, it's horrible. If you don't use something simple like this. To work on th simple examples, I think I think it's a bad thing. And there was a lady in New York who said, "I'm so pissed off at all these young people who don't know how to use the payment function." And I think maybe she was right. Maybe she was just being kind of angry. Okay. And then she, and we go to 49, uh, Shift Control C, and we get our debt draws from our. This is all in USD, of course. And then we put our repayment as the total payment minus the interest. That's what debt service is. Payment is debt service. And, then, and this is this plus this minus that. And the interest is the opening balance times the interest rate. And we shift control R it. And then we can take this interest. And this time divide it by our exchange rate, which we happen to have right there, and multiply it by a thousand. Okay, so then we get our 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 interest in oh, stupid multi oh, take the interest and multiply it by the exchange rate and divide by a thousand. Excuse me for doing that. Emphasized. I just made a mistake on purpose to emphasize things. Multiply that by the exchange rate and divide it by a thousand. Okay? That's our... When we need that repayment in a little while. Now, in our tax calculation, we better put the interest in Naira that we just computed. And this better subtract these two. I'm going to subtract this. I might have to add it, but we'll leave it for a minute. So we have less uh, uh, balance, and I think, I hope the rest of it kind of flowed through. And then we can compute this interest in USD, but again, it's almost irrelevant. And I, I, I uh, am moving from just this simple example to the philosophy that don't try to take shortcuts on this. Just do the calculation in the real currency, I, you know. That sounds almost 
obvious when we get through it. So then we can, we've done our difference in, in the taxes. Let's see how different they are. So, well, <laughs> it wasn't that bad, actually. If we just used the depreciation and then we deflated things, <laughs> it really wasn't bad at all. The NOL was the only thing that was the problem. So maybe I just retracted everything I said. What a idiot. Okay, and then in Naira, if we would do this, we, we would put less our debt service. And maybe, yeah, whatever. I'm not computing any DSCRs or anything else here, so what the heck. So let's go get our, our, our uh, interest plus our repayment in Naira. And our dividends, oops, our dividends are lower, but our investment is lower. Okay, same thing with U.S. We have the taxes already adjusted. Those are the taxes. And we better take the debt service in U.S., which, of course, happens to be our initial PMT function. And uh, uh, then we can subtract the remainder. Okay. And then now we get a much higher IRR. Uh -huh. Interesting. Good. Why did this IRR come out like this? Oh, I don't know why it came out. Of it. Oh, it's a sum call. Ah, yes. Okay, now let's do kind of the, well, if we put our debt balance in the U.S., let's put our debt balance, and that just comes from our closing balance of the debt. So we don't have a big issue with the, hopefully it won't be a big issue with our balance sheets. And then we'll take our, oops, this in equity investment better be the, from the sources and uses of fund statement. Okay. Now I don't understand. I, you know, these models where everybody does it this way. You start with the, the, you know, the constant inputs, the time series, put about eight different timelines on there, go to development. And then you, you know, you don't put the revenues expenses to the middle and you kind of put a sources and well i got it out of place but whatever you put a sources and uses isn't it easier to do it on why it got so complicated maybe i i kind of understand okay and then our, our liabilities our debt balance or liabilities plus capital is this and then let's whoops and then let's take the difference and get the, that. Okay. Oh, it bounced in one year. Ah, it bounced in two years. It bounced in all the years. Oh, ecstasy, ecstasy, ecstasy. Okay. Now, but we have to do it in the, in, in the next one. And that means now we have to put our balance in Naira. And now we have to make an exchange rate adjustment. And when we make an exchange rate adjustment, it's going to affect the taxes. So let's, it could affect the taxes, depending on the tax law. So let's put our opening balance equals our closing balance first. And then we get the debt issued in Naira from our sources and uses of fund state. Okay, and then we get our debt repaid from the debt balance. And we put that in Naira. And then we'll leave an, uh, the exchange rate assumption out for a minute, but put the opening balance plus the amount issued minus the amount repaid. And let's leave the FX adjustment out just for a minute. Okay, and then when we do all of this, our debt but doesn't get repaid. It's the same kind of issue as before. Okay, we're just about at the end. And when we, I, we, whatever, guys. When I did this for the asset side, I computed a funny little thing where 
I took the kind of the one minus the prior divided by the current, and that worked. Now, when I did on a, when we do it on the liability side and do it in Naira, you take the regular old percent change, just this divided by this minus one, and let's just look at that. Okay, after that. You make your debt balance, opening balance equal closing balance. This came from, if we press control P thing, it came from up here, sources and uses. Then I press F5, not control P, the thing, the square bracket. The repayment, control square bracket, that came from that repayment down there. And F5. Now, if you make your models nice and transparent with single formulas like this, you can find stuff. And then you take the opening balance, not the closing balance, and you multiply it by the first one, not the second one, the first one, the regular old percent change, shift control R, and then the nice thing is the closing balance goes down to zero. If you didn't do that, okay, then you'd have this closing balance that goes all funky on you. And then if you put the opening balance times the same thing we used before, that other percentage, then it doesn't go to zero still. Now tell me why. Some mathematician, please send me a comment saying, oh, you stupid idiot, it's obvious that you should have done that, and I just did it wrong again. Opening balance multiplied by the top one. Okay, and then it goes exactly down to zero. Now, here's the big problem. This FX, if it's an increase in a liability, I don't know enough count accounting, but we have to add this. And when you add something to a liability, that's a loss on the profit and loss statement. So once you have this one, you go up to the taxes and you take it away. And again, yeah, you'll put it on different sheets and it'll piss the hell out of me, but whatever. And then I put a little true and false thing here. Because remember, we could then say, okay, one of the inputs we put here for the taxes somewhere was, do you want to use this FX gains or losses? And I'm going to waste your time with a, a developer tab and see the effect of this. Okay, and... Oh. I hate this checkbox shit. Okay, and then we'll go to another sheet. Back to this sheet. Click on the true. Press OK. Click on that one. Right click. Copy it. Can put it way up here somewhere so we can see. Ah, what happens? I'm not going to even bother. What happens if we put it in or take it out? Does it affect the IRR? Well, that's a pretty significant effect. Remember, the small differences in IRR can buy you a two Lamborghinis. Okay, and if we do are able to deduct that, we get our taxes back down. If we can't, we don't. And that's our equity IRR. Okay, whatever. Uh, so you put it in the in the cash flow, in the profit and loss. So it's in the profit and loss, it's in EBT, and the net income starts with the EBT, so it's in net income. It's not in the cash flow, obviously. It's just for our, our tax calculation. And then we uh, 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 get down to the common equity balance. Well, this thing, the equity, that came from our sources and uses of fund statement. F5 again. I wish I could show you. It's the square bracket, you know? And then you take away, oh, you don't take away the loss because that's already in the income. And then I have a reference, but I'm going to take that away. I don't have a circular reference, luckily. Otherwise, that would have blown up my old computer, wouldn't it? I would have really started sweating. And then I would have gone, oh, no, it's, I will not allow this video ever again. And then we... <sighs> take the, the difference. So then we have our debt plus our adjusted equity and our balance sheet balances. And I had turned the video off. I cheated, obviously. Uh, and that's it. So the themes of this one are 
uh, or, or how to compute the FX adjustment that you really should probably do a tax analysis in the local currency. Let, let's, let's kind of look at this again on tax whether when we kind of did a simplistic one and just adjusted the depreciation versus not now we're getting eh, well oh, the, the, we're getting some differences in the taxes how about this I'm going to uh, let's let's put a zero tax holiday it's kind of interesting to see what happened to our IRR when we put a zero tax holiday maybe it didn't have as much effect as we thought because we have a net operating loss and then when we look down at the uh, uh, computed taxes compared to this one they are different they are different so they get to be the same after the debt goes away yeah, that's what they do okay it's not all that hard now I've got to put this on the website and I'm gonna pause the video and add a little adjunct later to show you where I put it on the website and oh, that was a long horrible experience not only for you for me too